Well, they're part of a project I've been working on for six years now, since 2006. And it's a project about yeah, migration from West Africa into Europe, more particularly into France. And so I spent a lot of time, I spent many visits uh, getting to know people and then following them uh, on their way. So it was a, it's been a long-term work which very much grew out of my anthropological way of working. And since I'm trained as an anthropologist, I, I employ a lot of the methodological um, tools that anthropology uh, provides. So it's, it's kind of like a, a crossover project between my interest in photography and then my, my training as an anthropologist that I've tried to combine into this project. Well, it was different uh, on the different sections of the of the journey. Um, in the village, I had the, the assistance of, 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 uh, of a very good assistant who was himself from that village, so that enabled me to to meet his family and to meet friends that he knew, and 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 in that way, it was much easier to gain access to 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 to, uh, to the young men I've been I've been working with, and then along the way. Um, well, you negotiate access and and you speak to people and tell them what what the project is about, and then obviously there's also the the, the issue of authorities and and uh, negotiating permission to travel along with the migrants in the car and uh, and 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 also in Paris where I worked, I, I spent six years coming to the same house where a lot of migrants are living people who came from West Africa. So basically it's built on a lot of time and patience and, and uh, discussions about the project and what, what, uh, what my vision is and, and how, how they can sort of like also perhaps use the project to express some of their frustrations and, and, and um, how should I put it? Communicate some of the, of the things that they're experiencing and their point of view. I think one thing that has been really like a constant in the project is this, uh, the fact that they are, well first of all quite young, many of them, so they're in a transition period between uh, adolescence and, and, and adulthood and, and at the same time very, very uh, open and very, very, you know, uh, how can you put it, very much, you know, I mean, the journey that they're undergoing is extremely long and perilous and, and very hard and brutal in many ways and, 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 and death is, is very much also part of the journey and, and longing and, and, and missing your loved ones. And there's a lot of things that, that goes on and I was really struck by their capacity to, to uh, in spite of all these challenges and in spite of, of the precarious situation and all the unknown factors that they were uh, facing, then, I mean, the fact that they could undertake this journey and that they would keep on going and that, you know, I like to think of it as a, as a story about contemporary heroes in a way because what they're doing is they're actually sacrificing, uh, to a certain extent, sacrificing themselves to help their families, uh, providing for them, sending back money. And, and I thought that was in, in, in this time where a lot of, of, of society in general is becoming much more individualized. I thought it was a very important, you know, aspect of um, of their journey is that they're they're actually doing this for their loved ones. So so that was a big uh, a big um, made a very lasting impression on me. And then perhaps also the fact that. They are, they are, they are. In many cases, they are thrown into a world that they did not. I mean, they know about the dangers of the journey, and they've heard that it's very dangerous. So it's not like they, they're traveling into something that, that that they don't know about. But, but still, it's a very, very uh, intense and very, very brutal way of being thrown into the world. And and I thought that 
that was something I really wanted to communicate with this project. Is this the hardship of the of the journey? Mm -hmm. And so it's also why I chose this dark, more like uh, blurry and 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 kind of like um, confusing. Uh, Aesthetic, because I wanted to put the audience into their uh, into their s sort of like world and, and and show how how yeah how confusing it is and how unknown it is and how dark it is. So. It was part of it. That's part of the. I mean. When they travel out, there's not, they're, they're not in, a, in an illegal situation, juridically speaking. It's only once they cross, in this case, into Algeria or Libya, that's where, uh, where it starts getting uh, more complicated from a juridical point of view. So, I mean, initially, the first leg of the journey is not, that is not an issue, but then once they, they arrive in, in in, uh, in, in the North African countries and of course even more so in Europe, then that was an aspect that I was thinking a lot about and for some of them that was also something that they, uh, that they required, that they would not be identified. And you see it most clearly in the images from, from Paris where you cannot, uh, some of them you cannot identify them at all, they're more like shadows. And, but that was also an aesthetic, uh, purely aesthetic choice because I wanted I wanted to create this idea of uh, yeah of shadow lives and of, of, of these shadows that are that are somehow part of of of, of, uh, of our um, society also not in not 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 in a negative way but just to give this illusion of of and that's why it's called clandestine also it's like this whole secret um, uh, dark uh, world in a way so so there was both like uh, I both had this um, aesthetic point of view, and I also had a, a on some in some ways I had a, like an ethical uh, reason for doing it. But I mean, most of them were not; they were not finding it problematic that they were that they could be identified. So it was not something that I heard a lot. But there were some people who who who, um, who, who mentioned that. But but in that case, I mostly tend to, to, to sort of like not depict them because I'm not interested in working with people who are not in, interested in being, you know, uh, let's say represented or being, being, you know, put into an image. It's not my kind of way of working. I want to work with people who are intent on telling their story also. And very much my, my way of working is very much about collaborating with the people who are in front of the camera to, to sort of like make a, a dialogue where I'm not taking a picture of them but we're making a picture together so it's this kind of participatory um, approach that I have so mm -hmm. yeah so there, there's, there are different reasons for, 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 the, for the aesthetic or the, the, the way that the images look but, but it was very important for me also to, to Put, bring myself into it. So I could have chosen a much more, let's say, classical uh, way of, of depicting this and, and not blurring it and not making it so dark. But uh, but for me, that was, again, back to what I said before, it was very important for me to communicate the the, the, the emotion I had of, of, of traveling with these uh, uh, young men because I was really struck by the hardship that they are, that they are um, that they're going through. And then also, I mean, on a little bit more like, uh, in terms of the references I've been thinking about for the project, then for example, uh, I've been thinking a lot about uh, Dan Jalisheri's uh, Divine Comedy, in particular Inferno, the, the section on Inferno, but also on the, the Odyssey, and how Ulysses, um, you know, he, he actually goes through the same kind of journey because every time he moves forward or backwards towards his uh, his uh, island then the way he manages is by continually uh, denouncing himself and cloaking himself and, and, and disguising himself by this cunning grace that he's attributed with and I wanted to 
I want to show also that in the project that, that, that that's actually what these men are doing. They are, they are employing the same cunning tactics in order to be able to arrive. That is, in order to become somebody, they have to become nobody first. And, and that was really, for me, a mythical uh, uh, story that, that, that I thought was, um, that I could recognize so much in, 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 in their whole journey. So. It's it's very you know diverse. You you get some people who are very aware and who have had a lot of information about about what takes place along the journey, what kind of dangers there might be, what Europe is and what Europe isn't. And but but I mean the people I work with in in, in, in this particular project for quite a significant number of them, uh, particularly from the village uh, where, where it all started. Um, I mean, it's a small farming community and uh, people, are, people are not in contact with Europeans and, and you know, physically, but what they do get is they gotta get a lot of rumors, a lot of stories from people who have migrated and who are in Europe and who are sending back money and they see other families in the village who might benefit from the money that is sent back from, from migrants in their families and then also uh, TV and film and, and, and media, you know, many of the young boys in the village were wearing like the French national um, national uh, football shirt and you know you go to the room in their, in their small uh, mud cleaned uh, mud brick houses and you find posters of, of Real Madrid and, and, and the big football team so it's, it's, it's a world that's very much present but as this image and this like fantasy uh, uh, world in a way so it's a mix but Many of those that I've spoken to in Paris who have arrived have, have told me that they were very surprised by how hard the life actually is for, 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 for them in Europe. And I mean, I have to say, those that I have focused on are perhaps also among the most vulnerable because they're not the ones that have had the most easy uh, transition and, 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 and success in Europe in terms of getting uh, work permits or residence permits. It's more people who are really undocumented and who are living uh, illegally and managing day to day uh, as much as possible without being recognized by authorities. So they're a special ca category, but, but um, it's a difficult question to, to, to answer, but I think you find the whole diversity from somebody who's extremely well informed to somebody who's um, who has very naive idea of what Europe is like, and and uh, and yeah, I think I think what 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 is really interesting also is that that in West Africa these men are known as adventurers, and they call themselves adventurers. That's the actual word that they that they employ to 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 like signify themselves. And in that word, you know, there's also a lot about discovery and uh, curiosity and wanting to know what's beyond and, you know, so it's not just an economical push factor, it's also very much uh, like wanting to see what's it's, what it's like on the other side. It's young men who have an appetite for life and, 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 and they've gotten all these images and all these uh, fantasies and then now they want to see what it's like, so so that plays in a lot, and and, uh, and and I think yeah, I think that's that's probably yeah, that's probably what I can say about that. More, it's a difficult question to answer, but it's a mix.